Let's take you to Malawi now, where Cyclone Freddy has wiped out the entire village of Matochira under uh, Likoswe Traditional Authority in Chirazulu. Relief and Rehabilitation Officer Charity Machika says in Chirazulu, 10 people have died while 44 have been injured due to the impact of Freddy. She adds that authorities are not sure of the number of people that inhabited the affected land. Let's have a quick chat about this. Tafadwa Mbahaldi is a climate change expert and now joins me to unpack this latest development. Thank you so much, Tafadwa, for your time here. Uh, we have seen the devastating impact the cyclone has left not only in Malawi, but also in Mozambique and Madagascar. Climate change has been blamed as the cause of these extreme weather events and the impact we are seeing today. I'd like to hear your take on that. Uh, thanks very much, uh, and, and thank you for having me. Um, so, of, of course, Cyclone Freddy uh, is a record-breaking uh, cyclone on its own. Uh, it has broken several records. It is the longest-lasting cyclone uh, on record, beating the previous record uh, held by Hurricane John uh, from 1994. Uh, it has also accumulated the most energy uh, over its lifespan than, you know, uh, a whole typical cyclone in the U.S., for example, uh, would hold. And it has lasted quite a very long period, hence the devastation uh, that we are seeing. In, in terms of climate change, uh, we have not yet received any confirmation in terms of attribution to confirm that the, the likelihood of Cyclone Freddy happening, uh, you know, has been intensified or worsened by climate change. So for that confirmation, we need an attribution study. And to the best of my knowledge, we haven't yet received that confirmation. However, speaking more generally, we do know that, you know, the, the current projections do indicate that we expect increasing extremes uh, in weather and those include these heavy downpours, floods, and droughts. And in Malawi, for example, uh, at this point in time, they're actually experiencing both. You know, there is the flood in the, in the southern part of uh, Malawi, and in the other part, they're experiencing extreme drought. So we do know that we should expect and anticipate these extremes, and we need to be better prepared to mitigate the impacts, Very well. especially on lives and livelihoods. What, 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 sh what should people be doing to prepare for these extreme weather conditions? Okay, so there are various things that need to be done. Uh, the, there are steps in terms of adaptation. So in Africa, we need to focus on adaptation. Uh, we need to develop our early warning system capabilities, and we need to build them from the bottom up. We've got good uh, early warning uh, capabilities at regional and national levels. So for example, the SADAC Regional Early Warning Unit did issue an alert. Very well. But at a local level, we need to build that capacity so that villagers know how to respond. Villagers know how to you know, have that capacity Indeed. to be able to evacuate those. We need well, to I'm afraid we'll have uh, to leave our conversation here. I apologize for, uh, you know, the lack of time on this. But thank you so much for your insight. Uh, you're welcome.